member statements it is. The first member statement today goes to the member from London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. I want to set the stage. My constituent, Lynn Johnson, wants to share her experience with home care. Her husband, Joe, was 76 years old, had surgery February 24th and March 4th. So you'd expect that they would get home care supports. Nope. That's not what happened. When home care was set up for Joe, Lynn was given two options, drive Joe to the local paramedic location twice a day or administer intravenous antibiotics for Joe at home by herself. As you can imagine, Speaker, given that Joe was released from the hospital just last, uh, just last month following two surgeries, Lynn has only 45 percent of use of her dominant arm. Neither of these options was ideal. After receiving limited training Paramed offered, she administered the IV at home. But what followed was a series of alarms that Paramed had not informed her of how to troubleshoot. When she decided it would be better to get Joe to Paramed clinic instead, she was left to navigate an entirely frustrating and not-so-friendly customer service system. Paramed did not return calls nor inform her of her appointments despite the billing the Ontario government for them. Under the Conservative and Liberal governments, these are the only options for Ontarians, deficient home care provider or over overburdened caregiver system. I wonder if the Premier or any of my colleagues in this legislature would feel comfortable administering an IV to their spouses while with little to no training. Paramed in London has a long, troubled history of how, pro how this for-profit company is allowed to continue to collect public funds with no oversight, no strings attached, no transparency, and no commitment to delivering quality of care. What the NDP would do, Speaker, we would deliver home care to help people live at home longer, we would end the for-profit, underpatched, understaffed patchwork of home care companies and make seniors not wait and make seniors uh, get the care that they need now, not in the future. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The next member's statement goes to the member from Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you very much, Speaker, and good morning. Speaker, last Sunday we as Canadians witnessed something special as we watched our men's national soccer team officially punch their ticket to the 2022 World Cup. Speaker, our soccer team hasn't qualified for the World Cup since 1986, which was 37 years ago. As a huge soccer fan and growing up playing the sport, I was beyond excited to watch the team that I have followed my entire life to finally qualify for the largest and greatest tournament on earth. Speaker, I would like to point out that not only did they qualify, but they finished top in CONCACAF group with 28 points ahead of powerhouses like Mexico and the United States. Speaker, there was just something special about this group when they began qualifications. It was extra special as Aurora's very own uh, Alistair Johnson, a local Aurora who played on both the Aurora Soccer Club and Richmond Hill Soccer Club took part on the team. Speaker, watching a local resident play and be a part of something so special is remarkable, and I was thrilled to see them pull through and qualify. To Alistair Johnson and the entire team, I want you to know that I, along with 38 million Canadians, will be cheering you on as you begin your 2022 World Cup journey in Qatar. I can't wait for them to play in November, and I know that the entire group will continue to shock the world and make us all proud. Go Team Canada. Thank you. The next member's statement, the member for Beaches, East York. Thank you, Speaker. When I walk the dogs to the beach, I often meet Vince out walking one of his little dogs he cares for on behalf of his neighbours. Vince is in his 70s, and this is how he supplements his income, which he needs to do. Like many seniors, Vince has lived in his little triplex for decades, and like many, he has faced eviction notice after eviction notice. The building he lives in is owned by a local realtor who lives in a huge house a few streets over, which the whole neighbourhood knows, so when he sends Vince an eviction notice on the grounds that he wants to move into Vince's tiny apartment, nobody, not even the landlord-tenant board, believes him. But that doesn't stop him from trying. Vince is fighting his seventh eviction notice. Just up the street from Vince on Queen Street are small apartment buildings that are increasingly owned by large corporations that are squeezing their tenants out to get the most profit out of the buildings they can. This is what the financial financialization of housing does. Many of these tenants are seniors, like Vince. If they are forced out, they will have nowhere to go. Speaker, seniors are calling us and telling us that they are hungry and scared. Solving the housing and food insecurity crisis is about caring for our elders. Yesterday, the minister threw up his hands and said he couldn't fix it. That is not governing, Speaker. Our elders deserve better. If the NDP were in government, this would have been solved by now. We need to do better. Thank you. 
Thank you. Member statements. The member for Markham Thornhill. Markham's Union. Bill. Sorry, Billy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm happy today to share this government's 14.5 million investment to build a new Markham Centre Elementary School as part of the Ford government's 600 million commitment for improving education across Ontario. This new school will create 638 new students' spaces. Markham Unionville is a growing community, and this new school will continue to ensure my constituents receive the highest quality of education this province offers. I look forward to seeing this positive impact that the new student spaces and public facilities have on our community. This is an amazing example of our government investing in state-of-art schools for students in my riding while promoting STEM education and preparing them for the jobs for tomorrow. With investments like this, I'm confident that Ontario will be set up for economic success and remain among the best educated population in the world. Mr. Speaker, with the rapid and steady growth of young families in Markham Unionville and other cities in Ontario, our government is committed to meet each such demands by building more schools. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Ottawa Centre. Good morning, Speaker. Last week was a really rough week for folks in Ottawa Centre, and it was rough because if you've ever visited Dow's Lake and the beautiful Rideau Canal, you'll know that there's a gorgeous park called Queen Juliana Park just across the street towards Carling Avenue. And right now, Queen Juliana Park is home to an incredible amount of new tree stumps, Speaker, because the Ottawa Hospital is moving forward with the plan to clear 750 mature trees from the experimental farm in that area to make way not for a new hospital, Speaker, a four-story parking garage with 2,500 spaces is the first thing that was getting built in our city to the detriment of our urban tree canopy. Speaker, I have spoken out, Bike Ottawa has spoken out, the Ottawa Disability Coalition has spoken out, the Ottawa Aboriginal Coalition has spoken out, elders like Norm Odchek, Albert Dumont, who's the Poet Laureate for our city, Irene Compton from Minwashan Lodge. No one is listening. The Ottawa Hospital Board will not listen to city residents. The province of Ontario apparently will not listen to Ottawa residents. The federal government will not listen to Ottawa residents. For some reason, a parking garage is necessary. So I'm making a desperate plea. We need a lawyer to pick up a legal injunction to stop the construction of the Ottawa parking garage. I will be making this an election issue in the upcoming election on June 2nd. Call me, contact me if you can help stop a parking garage over our health. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Chatham Kent Leamington. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. You know, the invasion of the Ukraine by Russian forces has been devastating and is taking a terrible toll on civilians, the armed forces, and the country itself. While this humanitarian crisis is the most important aspect of this war, another huge factor is its impact on world agriculture, including fertilizer and grain supplies. It's important that we find ways to maximize our food production this year. Ontario is Canada's most productive region, and I know firsthand our farmers are eager to do what is required to produce the food we all rely on. The three major fertilizers used in world crop production are nitrogen, phosphorus, and of course potassium. However, Russia's invasion of the Ukraine has put a massive portion of the world's fertilizer supply at risk, adding to concerns over soaring global food inflation. Ukraine is one of the uh, world's uh, most uh, important per, uh, exporters of grains like corn and wheat, as well as vegetable oils. Now, Canada is the world's fifth largest wheat producer, the tenth largest corn producer, the seventh largest soybean producer, and is the sixth largest barley producer. I sat in on a meeting with the Grain Farmers of Ontario, the OFA, and the Ontario Agribusiness Association recently. Now, together, these organizations represent over 50,000 farmers and all the agricultural retailers in Ontario. 
Prices for staple crops like wheat, corn, and soybeans are soaring, while rising costs for farm input costs such as fertilizer could add further increase to the price of food. Food prices could increase between 8 and 22 percent. Simultaneous drought conditions in Western Canada and South America have created great concern and uncertainty heading into this year's planting season. So depending upon how the agriculture and other related sectors respond to this crisis, it could very well determine how much food will be available around the world. Thank you very much, Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Flamborough, Glanbrook. Good morning, Speaker. Last week, our government proclaimed the month of May as Armenian Heritage Month. Ontario is home to more than 100,000 people of Armenian heritage, many in my hometown of Hamilton. Over the past century, a vibrant community was established in the East End, centered near St. Mary's Armenian Apostolic Church and the Armenian Community Centre. Members of the business community, such as the Alexanian and Vartanian rug companies, are household names in Hamilton. Armenians first came to Canada to escape the atrocities of the Armenian Genocide. In the 1920s, Canada began taking in orphaned Armenian children. More than 100 Armenian children lived on a farm near Georgetown. They became known as the Georgetown Boys. One of those boys was an eight-year-old named Toros Turnagian. Toros, who changed his name to Ernie Jackson, was the far, uh, father of Hamilton City Councillor Tom Jackson. Tom is deeply touched by this government's acknowledgement in designating May as Armenian Heritage Month. Tom said, as a descendant of the Georgetown Boys and on behalf of the 2,000 families of Armenian heritage in Hamilton and on behalf of the thousands of Armenians who call Ontario home, I want to applaud and express my sincere gratitude to the Government of Ontario for this recognition. Tom Jackson offers his heartfelt gratitude to Premier Ford, MPP Eris Babikian and members of the Legislature for this recognition. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Kiwetanong. Last week, a delegation of Indian residential school survivors, leaders, knowledge keepers, and youth traveled to the Vatican to meet with Pope Francis. The Pope acknowledged and apologized for the Catholic Church's role in the res Indian residential school system, which inflicted spiritual, cultural, emotional, and physical abuse on the children that attended residential school. While the Pope's apology may be a start, reconciliation is an ongoing process that must be followed by concrete actions. We have seen this action being taken uh, over the past year, more than 1,800 unmarked graves being identified in Canada, over 1,800. Now, through the Indigenous-led process and ownership of records, Laxo First Nation is leading the search on the grounds of Pelican Lake Residential School. I stand in unity with uh, Laxo and all those doing this work. Finding and bringing home our children will not be easy. It is a difficult task. It is a stark reminder that of the abuse our children suffered at the hands of the church and state. However, it is a necessary responsibility. With Laksu taking charge, I know it will be done with tremendous care and respect, honoring survivors, their families, and all the children who did not get to come home. Miigwech. Member Statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Economic recovery is one of the greatest concerns in my riding of Richmond Hill. Last week, I had the honour of attending the Richmond Hill Board of Trade signature event, the Power Hour, where representatives from three levels of government share the outlook and welcome questions from the floor. Businesses express their appreciation of the provincial government support through the business cost rebate the small business grants, and the provincial interest and penalty-free period. They're all excited with the $10 daycare program. 
the immediate savings of 25% right now and a 50% by December 22nd is timely for families. That means more females can get back to work. They are very happy that the manufacturing sector is coming back and jobs are being created. This will bit stimulate business across the province. Business in, uh, in Richmond Hill is confident that our economy is recovering. I ended with four P's of encouragement for the people that attended. First, protect. Take the vaccination. Second, be positive, have a positive attitude, give good health and insights. Third, plan, reassess a business plan. Do they have the right clients or should they go digitally and develop the business globally and locally? The last one is proactive, act swift and adapt to the marketplace. Yes, Ontario will soon be the economic engine for Ontario, for Canada. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. Introduction of visitors.